Father, we recognize that the church can only be the light of the world, a city set upon a hill. The only possibility of that being an existing reality is that the church would be baptized in the fire of your presence, in the fire of your own Holy Spirit. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ for the fire of heaven, for the glory of heaven to so take hold of every soul in this place, to so take hold of your churches in this city, to so take hold of the churches in the United States of America that once again the light of your glory may shine brightly as a city set upon a hill. Father, I pray right now that there would come a great hunger in the hearts of your people instead of a complacency. Oh God, I pray, oh God, there come a great desperation, a neediness in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this work of grace. Well, you know, the way it is, is like this. Every witness concerning the things of the Spirit and the things of God were right in line with what Smith Wigglesworth said, a man that ultimately had such great works and exploits in his life that he was called the Apostle of Faith. That's a, that's a great title for the men of the church to give a man of God. The Apostle of Faith. He said, I'm only satisfied about one thing in my life, and that is that I'm not satisfied. There's too many people that is satisfied with that, and it certainly couldn't be with the great exploits in God, for there are few that have been being done. So they must be more satisfied with themselves and the things that the world would define about themselves other than that which God has declared in His Word. Because when we begin to measure our lives by what God has declared in His Word, uh, the most of us uh, haven't even gotten started. We're still in a decision-making process. We kind of like find ourselves in that place that James declared, quit halting between two opinions. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways, referring back to the prophet Elijah when he stood there and said, don't be of two opinions anymore. Decide who you're going to serve. Decide for yourself today who God is. And when we do that, all of a sudden, something begins to happen. When we decide that God is God, a revelation begins to strike our lives. We begin to behold the beauty of His glory and the unbelievable call of authority that He's placed upon our lives to go do what He would do in His stead. God's looking for some people who are not afraid to stand in the place that He's given to us and command that which He has willed. <laughs> to command that which he has willed. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. To command that which he has willed. Somebody's waiting for somebody else to do it. Somebody's waiting for another day. I pray today you'll step into that day, that the day will be your day. Amen. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands towards heaven. Let the fire of God come upon you. The Lord Jesus would like to baptize you today in the Holy Ghost. He'd like to baptize you afresh. He'd like to fill you anew. Right now, in Jesus' name, let God take you to another whole other dimension of preparation so that you can begin to fulfill His perfect will for your life. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I speak boldness and confidence into your spirit. I speak boldness and assurance into your life. I speak divine power and authority right now into the very lips of your, uh, of, of your conversation, into the words of your speech. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you take complete and total control over this meeting right now. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the wonderful, glorious, manifest presence of Jesus right here, right now. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, you can be seated. Hope you're not too hot. In fact, I, 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 hope that, I hope that where you're at right now, you're so in need of the fire of God that you, instead of praying to get cooler and cooled off, you pray in Jesus' name to get hotter and burn with the glory of His presence. See, what people need to, need to understand is that the only light that there is, the only light of truth, the only light of hope, the only light of goodness, the only light of God that exists is the very presence of Jesus Christ, the person of Jesus Christ. And God's called you and I to be the light of the world, which is impossible until you and I will step into a realm of walking in His manifest presence where the life of Jesus Christ is manifested and revealed through us. And it starts at the very beginning of the new birth. It starts at the very beginning of just a, a simple confession of who Jesus Christ is, that he was born of a virgin, that he was and is the only begotten Son of God who came here to live and die that we might be saved, who was crucified at Calvary's cross and was buried, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He's ascended up into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he's made a new creation out of me. <laughs> Hallelujah. It just begins with whatever happened, where you were, whatever life you had, and then the great transformation of life that took place when you suddenly was introduced to the Lord Jesus Christ by the Holy Ghost who came himself to introduce you to Jesus. Pretty amazing, eh? Pretty amazing. Huh? And then, and then the life of Jesus begins to be manifested. Well, now you're walking around thrilled, thrilled every day with this new life that you have in Christ Jesus. Thrilled every day with the relationship that God has given to you in His only begotten Son that is made alive and revealed through you by the Holy Ghost. Walking around uh, joyful all day long, having a peace that not even the worst troubling news could take from you, a peace that is impossible for the world to steal because the Prince of Peace rules over you and you receive the life of His Word when He said, peace I give to you, it's a peace that the world cannot disturb or take away from you. Huh? Every day getting to live out a life that, you, that proves and describes and declares that you under the rulership of the living God. One that is being taught every day by the Holy Ghost how to step by step walk in this wonderful way of heaven. To live a heavenly life in an earthly realm is a glorious thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to talk to you this morning about what it looks like to live a heavenly life in an earthly realm. I want you to consider that all the Bible stories aren't just stories. But what they are is they're, I, they're, they're, they're specific moments where God, for His own divine purpose to grab a hold of our hearts, just took a snapshot of, of certain men who walked with Him because there have been many mighty men that are unnamed and then are in the halls of faith revealed in Hebrews chapter 11. They were never known by name, but they were mighty men of God nonetheless. But God took some snapshots of folks like Elisha to show us that really there is a realm of heaven that you can walk in and live in while you're here in this earthly body. You just got to understand how to connect with the Holy Ghost, how to yield to Him, because I'm going to tell you right now, religion without the good news of this gospel that I'm preaching is nothing more than a means by which to enslave men. Until you step into the very life and expression of Jesus Christ moving in your being, the freedom that He has brought to us, the way we, we can live in this everyday joy, this everyday love, and this everyday peace, in this everyday freedom from the cares of this world and, and the discouragements that Satan and men would try to impose upon you. There is a life in Christ Jesus is called abundant life, and we are here to declare to the, to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ today, receive the life of Christ. Receive the life of Jesus. It's very different in, in its expression than what, has been, than what has been viewed by the world and the religious institutions of today. This is the truth. Today, we want you to be able to look at the Bible and see that God raised up men who spoke out of the realms of heaven and say, saying and testifying to us, there is a place to walk with God where you can live in heaven today, right now, where you can live in a realm of relationship and divine glory. You do not have to be subject to all of the elements and circumstances and situations and stormy events. You can live over here ruling and reigning with Christ Jesus. 
Joshua showed us when he commanded the wind and the waves in a different way, speaking to the sun and the moon to stand still. The very acts of Jesus being manifested in his life. We see Moses before him also commanding the wind and the waves, having authority over the elements as he stretched forth this wonderful realm of authority that was placed in his life. And as he did, the seas parted and a pathway of dry land was created so that God's people could cross over and the Father's promise and divine provision. Elijah stands as a testimony to us that we can grab a hold of authority over the winds and the waves, over the elements of this life, over the circumstances of the situation, the things that seem that it was impossible to change. And so James highlights them in James chapter 5 and verse 17. I want you to turn your Bibles and look with me in James chapter 5, verse 17. And when I'm reading this thing to you, I don't want you to be thinking about somebody else and what someone else is going to do and what someone else has done. But I want you to be taking it very personally and let the Holy Ghost begin to describe to you what you're going to do what he's going to do through you because he's not talking to somebody else, he's talking to you. I want you to hear me, God's not talking to somebody else, he's talking to you. God's not condemning you, he's giving you an opportunity. God's not rejecting you, he's giving you an invitation. But what happens is so many people look at the situation that they're in and they hear the great commands of God and then they take it as rejection because they look to the arm of flesh and say it's impossible for me to do it so I don't fit in. But if you won't look to the arm of flesh, if you'll recognize today it's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the living God, all of a sudden you'll have a divine hope, a divine inspiration will breathe into your spirit, and suddenly you'll stand in a place where there is good footing, a good footing, a place to stand. Faith is the hypostasis. It is a good footing. It is a good place to stand. It is a reality. It is a tangible truth. <laughs> it's more than substance. It's a reality. It's a tangible truth. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's a good footing. <laughs> it's the stasis. It's the stance. Hallelujah. <laughs> Father wants you to find a good footing because you might have a whole bunch of stuff coming at you. I was working with my wife doing, uh, uh, teaching her a little bit more golf the other day and and she was getting a, she was having a little bit of a challenge on a certain part. And I said, look, all you need to do is have a good footing so that I can't come and push you over. If you've got a good footing now that I can't come and push you over, then you're well balanced. Huh? Now you can begin to perform. Now you can begin to do what this game demands of you to do. Hallelujah. You're going to have to have a good stance <laughs> so you can perform, so you can begin to do what God has commanded you and I to do. And if you're looking to yourself, you're going to get discouraged before you get started. <laughs> Hallelujah. John, uh, forgive me, James chapter 5, verse 17, look, it gives to us an expression of what real prayer is. People got all kinds of ideas about what prayer is, but uh, chapter 5 of James, verse 17, tells us about a man who did not look to himself, he did not regard himself, he did not consider his own uh, circumstance, situation, who he was by, by the, the nature of his humanity. <laughs> but he was, be, he was willing to believe what God said about him. He was willing to look past all of his frailty. He was able to look past all of his inability. He was able to look past the fact that he was a tishbite. <laughs> he was able to look past all the things that would limit him and recognize that God had gifted him and given him a divine opportunity and he was willing to stand boldly in that divine opportunity. And Father's talking to you, not just about Elijah. These are snapshots of men saying, you can live here too. They're speaking out of time. They're speaking at, in different places throughout the history of humanity saying, there is a realm which you can live in. Would you like to come into this place? And then the beautiful thing is that one day, Christ Jesus, the living God, showed up on the scene and opened up the door and said, everybody can come on in to this, to this, to this that, that was testified over and again by the prophets of old, but even something greater. Yet the challenge is that you're going to always be being berated by the doubt and the unbelief and, and the voice of men and the voice of circumstances and the limitation of human ability and the limitation of, 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 of the arm of flesh. And what happened is at the end of the day, something's going to win out. Either you're you looking at and considering your own body, your own being. Abraham did not consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not consider how, how he was in his own body even dead, as it were. 
that there was no possibility for the promises of God to be fulfilled. But something happened. He was willing to turn and look at what God said rather than looking at what all of the voices of, of, of fact would say, what all the voices of circumstance would declare. You read in James chapter 5, verse 17, Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we were. He was a man who had the same kind of, of, of issues to deal with, who had the same voices of defeat coming at him. He was a man who had to deal with the same frailties of nature. But he was willing to consider something about himself that went far beyond what he knew about himself and defined it himself and everybody else defined about him. He was just an ordinary, everyday, run-of-the-mill tishbite. And something happened. He had an encounter with God. And when you have an encounter with God, everything changes. Many people say they have an encounter with God, but everything didn't change. When you have an encounter with God, everything changes. What so many people need to begin to do is to say, I want an encounter with God. I want power of God to overshadow my life. Listen to me. When the power of God overshadows your life, you have a real change, just like Saul had a real change. Saul, the king of Israel, had a real change. He was kind of a introverted, shy type of awkward, tall guy. He was, and when they called for him to make him king because it was revealed by the prophet Samuel, he went and hid in the stuff because he didn't like the public view. He was a little introvert. God took him and said, listen, here's what's going to happen to you. You're going to have a change. You're going to have an encounter. The power of God will overshadow you. The power of the Most High will come upon you. <laughs> and he was changed. He just received a heart of boldness and confidence. Suddenly, all that he had, all the ideas, all the thoughts that he had about himself, all the things that made it, uh, created so, so, so many different inhibitions within his life and fear of men within his life was totally removed. All those things about his own life that he looked at and saw in the mirror that made him feel awkward and made him feel ashamed and made him feel like he didn't measure up was totally, totally eclipsed. Had an encounter with God, the power of God overshadowed him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Same thing happened to Saul of Tarsus. He had a mind, he had a passion, he had a vision, he had an understanding of God's word. He thought he knew the truth better than anybody else on the planet. He was raised up by the best of teachers to know the word of God better than anyone else, to quote it. To quote the word of God from Genesis to 2 Chronicles, and that's the way it's laid out. In the Hebrew Bible, but one day he had an encounter with God. <laughs> and the encounter changed everything. The encounter with God redefined everything. Changes that must take place in the heart that can never be mitigated by concepts and ideas where men try to convince themselves of this thing or that thing, of how to move in God, how to do what God's called us to do. An encounter that brings a change of mind and heart, a revelation of God that gives you an understanding that goes beyond anything that you've ever understood of yourself. Where God the Holy Ghost begins to redefine your life in Jesus Christ. And now it's not defined in your weaknesses, not defined in your failures. It's not defined in all the limitations. It's not defined in all your wishes and wants and all your expectations. It's a whole new definition of meaning. Oh, it's only by an encounter. Somebody said, I want to come and stand in the prayer line tonight and I want to be able to have this encounter. That's predicated by the hunger. That's predicated by the, the crying out. That's predicated because you were willing to allow God to give you a revelation of what Father wanted to do with your life. And then you looked at it for what it was and said, I want the encounter with you. This is where every great move of God ever took place. Every great man or every great woman. In fact, if it is, is the whole church of the Lord Jesus Christ has the potential to be great. And only a few people have been willing to be a part of that greatness. And then when we begin to look at reality, then we can understand that we run the risk of being another statistic of just occupying a place of greatness in God, but never actually moving into that realm and it becoming a reality and expression through our life. All the time having the full potential. All the time having the full divine ability. I tell people all the time, you're never going to know who you are until you have an encounter with God. 
You're never going to understand who you really are until God the Holy Ghost begins to bring the expression to your life that He ordained and created you to be in Christ Jesus. You're just going to be flopping around like a fish out of water hoping to get back in. But unfortunately, so many, so many fish in this such a particular scenario and allegory have been made to believe that they can breathe there and they become contented flopping around on shore. <laughs> what a stifling life. What a suffocating existence. Father's doing great things. These are the times of the great outpourings of the living God. These are the days that Daniel spoke of that's when he said, in the last days, they that know their God shall do great exploits. And in the context of Daniel talking about great exploits, boy, those must be great. Yeah, and I can more clearly define them for you. For Jesus said, these works which I do shall you do also, but yet greater works than these. Because I go to my Father, which means he was going to send to us an immeasurable gifting of the Holy Ghost so that we could step in to every dimension of the power and the glory and majesty that he expressed when he walked upon the surf for a little more than three and a half years expressing the fullness of that glory. Although he had lived 30 years prior to that, he walked around as it were hidden away in his relationship with the Lord Jesus. With the, forgive me, with his, the Lord Jesus and his relationship with the Father. Hidden away. Till one day God said, now it's time for you to show everybody what it is that I purposed and willed for man. It's time for you now to begin to offer yourself is that perfect sacrifice to me. Let everybody see the glory that is upon this lamb that's about to be offered up for their sin. Let every man understand what God has willed for them to walk in. Let everyone that is in the church today recognize what it means to be a light unto the world. The city set upon a hill. It cannot be it. Let every man understand what it means not to be lukewarm. Let every man understand what it means to be baptized in the fire of God. Let, let there be no doubt in anyone's heart that is going to follow Jesus and be truly a follower of Jesus what it looks like to be so. Now, you don't need any commentaries. You don't need any theologians. You don't need a special group of scholars to define for you that which God is wielding, which God is purpose for Jesus Christ himself came and in every way described it and declared it. And Father has sent us the Holy Ghost to teach those who are willing to be taught how to walk in and move in every footstep for which he showed us that we are to move and walk in. You can't, you, can't under, you can't look to yourself. You can't understand these things within the framework of what you can accomplish or what you can be. Huh. You must be, begin to realize that, what this, that the only way that this begins to take place in our life is because we begin to allow God to have his will and way. We begin, we find a good, good firm footing a place to stand. We're having done all to stand. We continue to stand and we will not be moved. And this is what we're going to do. Huh? Where, where we find ourselves coming up short in the demonstration of faith and we find ourselves coming up short in demonstration of power, we become all that much more hungry for the Holy Ghost to teach us how to move that way. We become that much more desperate about being strengthened and being, being built up in the way rather than finding excuses of why we don't have to live that way today. Uh, rather than finding excuses about how we can suddenly, you know, begin to write out a new scripture and to find a new way, realm of living so that we can be happy with ourselves and contented with what we're doing. When all the time, God wants to invade the earth through the realms of your life, to the actions and the behavior and the manner of your existence. Listen to me. Elijah was a man subject to like passions, went through the same kind of issues, had to deal with the same kind of weaknesses, had to, had to recognize the same kind of limitations, if you would. But there was something else that had defined his life greater than all that went before that day. And that was the call of God that was placed upon his life. And he prayed that it would rain not for the space of three and a half years. And it did not rain. Now I want to show you how he prayed. Are you ready? I want to show you how he stood as a man of God who, who simply commanded what God had willed. And it had, to, it had to take place. He was a man who walked with God. We don't know how long he walked with God before the exploits of greatness took place in his life. I know how long Moses walked with God before the greatness of exploits took place in his life. Moses faithfully walked with God for 80 years before the great exploits of God took place in his life. I'm talking about faithfully walked with God for 80 years. <laughs> I can tell you, he waited, on the, he waited on the Lord 40 years in the wilderness. He waited on God. We saw it. I, I, he wasn't off 
uh, you know, just in the back, you know, into the wilderness doing his own thing. He had a heart and a hunger and a passion towards God. And as soon as, soon as his eye caught a glimpse of the smallest little bit of fire of God, he said, I'm going to turn aside and go and see what this wonderful sight, what this glorious thing is that's over here, this little bit of moving, this little spark that I see. I see it barely, faintly there upon the sides of the mountain slopes of Sinai. There, he was so hungry for God that at the slightest moving of the voice of God, at the slightest moving of the Spirit of God, they all in. They not part in. They're not just there looking and kind of, you know, suspiciously, you know, checking it out. They all in. Because their heart stood desperate for the sound of his voice, so desperate for the movings of his Spirit. They don't have to have a second opinion. My goodness, their, their heart is so desperate for the movings of God. As soon as they see the slightest little indication, they know the joyful sound. They overwhelmed with that which they have been longing for and seeking after. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. When you've been in the desert wandering around where there is no water and suddenly you come on the smallest little pool of water though it may be nothing more than that which was collected in the hoof print of a horse or an animal. Huh? You don't send off, you don't take a sample and send off for analysis. Uh -uh. <laughs> you don't take a sample and send it off for analysis to see if it's fit for you to drink because you're about to die. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's lapped up quicker than you can, quicker than it can, than, than it can even be viewed. As soon as you see it, it's soon that gone. Huh? <laughs> and you take the sand of it and the dirt of it and put it in your mouth that you can soak out the little bit of moisture that's left. Oh, no one can understand what I'm saying because you've never been that thirsty. But God says, when you get that thirsty, he said, I'll open up heaven for you, man. He said, I'll pour out more than you can possibly ever imagine even ever existed. <laughs> I want you to understand, dear people, that you begin to take a hold of this authority in God through the activity of prayer. And I don't want you to understand what the activity of prayer is. It's come, first and foremost, it's seen as just a conversation going on with God, wanting to know him, a calling out to him, a seeking after him, a petitioning of him, a supplication towards him with all thanksgiving. But then that prayer matures into something like 1 Kings 17, 1. Go over here and look at that. Let's go look at 1 Kings. 1 Kings. Chapter 17. First Kings. Chapter 17. Verse 1. Are you there? Look at his prayer. He was a man just like us. And what James is doing is James is trying to call us to be a man just like him. What James is trying to do, he's saying, I want you to understand, you're going to have church, you're going to have to become a man just like him. He was a man just like us, and it's time for you to become a man just like him. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab the king, this is a nobody from nowhere. Who do you think you are? And no one, he, he hasn't ever done, he hasn't ever built a business. He hasn't ever accomplished any great thing. And here he's now, see, standing in his little, in his little raggy garments, his little wilderness garments, before the, the king all dressed in all his royal attire. And he says, you listen to me. You think that you're the one who has the word of authority that goes out here. You think you're the one that commands things and this is how it's going to be. He said, you listen to me. It shall not rain for these years, but according to my word. But according to my word. You listen to that. You listen to the boldness of faith. You listen to a man who took up his assignment to do what God commanded. He did whatever he commanded, whatever God was willing. He was a man who did not look upon himself after the natural and look at the limitations and didn't hear the voices of who do you think you are. He didn't consider the failures of the past. He didn't con consider potentially even the unanswered prayers or the distance between him and God. Suddenly he stepped into a realm in which he can now be an ambassador of Almighty God, stand in the stead of the living God, speak out of the realms of heaven and say, this is how my prayer works works listen 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 to me this is how it works somebody who's going to get enough authority hallelujah someone who's going to receive enough authority to be a son of God someone who's going to receive enough authority who's going to believe Jesus enough to receive an authority to be a son of God Elijah did not classify himself as a son of God he classified himself as a Tishbite uh, 
he classified himself as a servant of the Lord, and he said, it's not raining, except for I say so. <laughs> what does it take for you to move in the realms of your limitation and your false humility where you can't really do much at all to all of a sudden stepping in Christ Jesus and being able to do all things? What does it take to give you a transition so that you can really come to true humility and true revelation that you can do nothing of yourself? Because I watch a lot of people who are doing a lot of things of themselves. They're caring for themselves. They're providing their clothes for themselves. They're providing food for themselves. And they take all thought for what they shall eat. And they take all thought for what they shall wear. Yeah. Huh? It's, I don't even think it's partial thought for what they should eat and partial thought for what they shall wear. <laughs> but all thought. They really, really, really change the Word of God by changing one word. No to all. And it needs to get changed back. It needs to get changed back from all to no. Take no thought for what you shall eat. Take no thought for what you shall wear. Somebody said, that's too radical. No, it's not. It's exactly what Father's willed, and you need to command it. It's what Father's willed, and you need to command it. Because there's many times that God speaks to people and tells them to do things, and they take thought for what they can do. Well, it's not within the frameworks of my, limit, of, of my abilities. It's, it's rather... All I can see is my limitation because after all, pastor, give me a break. Uh, you know, how are we going to get food around here and how are we going to get clothed unless we take thought for it? And it's that same thought that keeps you from moving in those moments of greatness where God says, step out upon the water, command the wind and the waves, speak to the moon and the sun. Say, son, you cannot move. <laughs> in Agilon, sun stands still. Moon stands still in edge line. Sons, don't move from Gibeon. Stay right there till I'm done. That's a prayer. Can you hear that prayer? According to his word, a man sold out to God, a woman sold out to God, so filled with the revelation and the knowledge that he is God and that he's a very present God and that he has sent them to stand in his stead and proclaim those things which he has willed. Oh, that's an encounter. It's an encounter. Will God not give you an encounter? Will God not allow you such an opportunity and such an ability and such a privilege? I assure you that he will. I assure you if you get hungry, I assure you if you get thirsty for an encounter, I assure you that he will. Now let me tell you what you're going to have to move past. You're going to have to move past all your preferences. You're going to have to move past all your definitions. You're going to have to move past all your ideas. All your beliefs are going to be challenged. All of the concepts that you were nurtured in from a child are going to have to be refused. Because those things are going to stand up in front of you in an in divine encounter with God and declare to you that you don't need it or that it can't happen. Or maybe even become a lie and say it has happened when you have no fruit or outworking or evidence that it did happen. Don't be deceived. People are willingly deceived because they see things that are not there. I'm not talking about seeing things that are not there. I'm talking about seeing very clearly through the Spirit that which exists has been declared to us by the Word of God and making that invisible realm more valuable, more important, more relevant than everything that you've seen and heard and been taught up to this point. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I set you free right now in Jesus' name from your prison from your prison of the past. More people live in a prison of the past that sit in church than they do from a prison of sin. They live in a prison of doubt and unbelief. They live in a prison of failure and defeat. They live in a prison of some bad event or circumstance that happened in their life. Some belief system that they were willing to buy in on when they stood at a crossroads at an important moment in their life and they chose the wrong, they made the wrong choice. They went with the wrong opinion. Instead of regrouping, they laid there in that ditch. As one friend of mine said, a grave, or rather a ditch is nothing more than a grave with the ends kicked out. So it's time to get out the ditch. So it's, it's time for you to boldly get up and proclaim those things which God has spoken. It's time for you to boldly start b believing. If you don't continue this, I, I was listening to a preacher, a, a minister, and he was saying in the, in, in the context of a, of a lot of, of other preachers, men, famous men of God. And he was saying, I walked in that room and I knew that all I had to do was shake off the death that was upon that person, but there was too much unbelief in the room. 
And I looked around and as some of the more noble and accomplished ones sat there a little bit embarrassed by what this poor, full of faith preacher said. I immediately picked up on it. I turned to him. I said, somebody's going to have to be willing to shake off death. Somebody's going to have to be willing to apply themselves to what Jesus said, no matter what the consequences, no matter what the opposition, no, what, no matter what the seeming defeat, because unless you are committed, the Holy Ghost is never going to be able to teach you how to walk there. Unless you are committed to do it, and the Holy Ghost is never going to be able to teach you how to move there. But he's here to teach us. You've got to learn how to listen to him. You know what's going to stand up between you and listening to his voice? Of the Spirit. And the leadership of the Holy Ghost, your own mind, your own thinking. And God has dedicated you and I, and it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter how long He has to plead and beg with us. He's dedicated to you and I walking in the mind of the Spirit, to walking in the mind of Christ. He begs us, He pleads with us. He, he, and, and over and again, we find ourselves overwhelmed by circumstances, and we immediately, go, we, we immediately retreat to the mind of of flesh, the mind of human thinking, the mind of limitation, the mind of my own arm is going to get for me this gain and, and help me from this trouble. Uh, it's the same as trusting in the, in the horses and the chariots of Egypt. It's the same doubt and unbelief that Jeremiah said, cursed are those who live in it in his, in his, in his proclamation and, and, and cry and scream to Israel in Jeremiah chapter 17. Cursed is the man who puts his trust in the arm of flesh. There'll be no good days of heaven for him. It's a, tra it's a powerful transition. In that, in that area, is a there's a dying to self. There is. I rather call it a, a denying of self. But as many people have called it a dying to self, I think it fits well within the respect of the purity of God's word Every day you must deny yourself because it is almost a death experience. And maybe if you'll elevate it or ratchet it up to that level, suddenly you'll realize the cause and you'll understand the effort. Huh? It's just not some ca casual, oh, well, I'm, we're not going to do that today. Because it has become such a way in which men have operated because we operate within the money realm. We operate within the physical limitations of everything that we've known and understood about how things work. And it's hard to break free from that and step over into a supernatural realm, even and then from there to a spectacular realm where all of a sudden you can call it and it takes place. You can command it and it is done. For God has willed it. God has willed it. God has willed it. I'm going to minister tonight on a scripture, a verse of scripture as part of this Poe's story that the Lord just captivated my heart with recently. And you're going to have to come back to hear it. But it's how God brings revival and causes people to know revival is going to come. And it came out of the very mouth of Elijah. There's something about Elijah and, and, and how he moved in faith and how he was willing to participate with God that is always a part of the revelation of Jesus. It was a part of the revelation of Jesus because John came in the spirit of it. <laughs> to prepare the way for Jesus to be revealed. And he's going to come literally in person just before Jesus returns again. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. The other day, a friend of mine said, these aren't the days of Elijah. These are the days of you. I was a little shocked by that. I was a little shocked by that because I like I, I really believe these are the days of Jesus. Amen. He said, these are the days of you. Huh? These are the days of you when you step in to the call of God, when you step in to the mantle of the Holy Ghost that's been placed upon you and you suddenly say, I don't live no more. I don't live by the def definition of that which I've known about me. I live now in Christ Jesus. I got a whole new life. Uh, my life has passed away that I've known after the human frailty and limitations of an earthly existence. And I take on this wonderful life given to me as a gift by God in Christ Jesus where he has now empowered me and said, you come over here. I was not worthy, but he said, you come over here and you take your seat here at my table. <laughs> Hallelujah. I could have said, no, I'm not worthy. I can't sit with the mighty host of God. 
He said, I have made this place for you. It does not matter who you are. It does not matter your place of origin. It does not matter your nationality, your tongue, your tribe, your education. It does not matter where you come from. God in Christ Jesus has brought forth an invitation to every man. Come take your place here at the table. Come take your place among the mighty. Dear people, the millennial reign of Christ <laughs> this is about to go down is going to be glorious and awesome in that which God will do through those who are part of the first resurrection. But I'm telling you what God has purposed to do now, the forerunner of it is equally awesome and glorious according to that which God described. But too many wa waver. They're of two different opinions. They define their life too much in this world. And God says, you can't. You'll be unstable. A double-minded man. James is really picking up on that whole contest of what's going on in 1 Kings 17 and 18. When he begins to describe this, because he's saying, he's saying to the church, you can look back in verse 7, he says to the church, after he's calling the church to a consecrated life, a consecrated life. People have had all kinds of ideas of what it means to live a consecrated life. I've heard so many sermons on a consecrated life in 56 years. I've heard so many sermons on what it means to be sanctified. But I tell you, a consecrated life, according to the Word of God, is a life that has defined itself in Jesus Christ alone. What God has designed for us to sanctify ourselves unto and be sanctified in is that which He sanctified for us when He gave us this new life and defined our existence in His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. And the very moment that you begin to believe that, you will begin to hunger. You'll begin to demand it of yourself. And every failure and every seeming defeat will be only a resolution to succeed. That's so all it will be in your life. It will be a resolve to succeed. You won't get up from failure and feel defeated. You'll get up from failure and say, I shall succeed. I will win this fight, this battle. I'll stand in this place that God has given me to stand. I'll know nothing except the word of God. Father has called you and I. I woke up the other morning. I'm just thinking about the Declaration of Independence. Woke up the other morning and I heard my spirit. The Declaration of Freedom is but a flash in the pan when there is no code to ensure its liberties. Men must turn, return to the holiness of living by the Word of God. That's holiness. Uh, holiness. Uh, hear me now. Well, uh, holiness has been defined in so many ways. I've heard so many sermons on holiness for 56 years. Holiness is absolutely giving yourself over to live only by the Word of God. It doesn't matter. You risk your whole life. Get, lay your whole life down for it. It doesn't matter. Huh? To not live by the Word of God would be over my dead body. Because I'm willing to lay down my life. I'm willing to put my life on the line. That what God said is true. That he's faithful. That he's a man of integrity. A God of integrity. Say Christ Jesus is a man of integrity. Because he's always going to be a man. That is God. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Try to figure that out with your theological concepts. Of how God began when he began. Who never began. Huh? And yet he's retained the place and position. It's our elder brother. And man, with scar prints in his hands and on his feet. And I would not doubt to see in that day the scar from the, the lash of the whip upon his back. On closer examination, the scars from the crown of thorns upon his brow. That scar your head, that scar, scar your forehead up pretty bad. So that you and I could step into this realm of divine glory. He who is rich became poor for our sake, that through his poverty we might receive the riches of God. Huh? To recognize that he should provide for us. Huh? According to his riches and glory, he shall provide all that we have need of. And what's happened is the human thinking has reduced that and to a place of monetizing it. I don't think you could have you reduced it to any more profane level.
to monetize what I have need of is this greatness of God that he's purposed for me to walk in so that I might be a testimony and a witness that God raised Jesus from the dead. That's you and me. We have to receive power from on high, an authority of God from on high before we can be his witnesses. An empowerment of the Holy Ghost on a level that he's not only with you, being your teacher and your mentor, showing you how to take step by step, how to learn to live in this, how to learn to move in the wind of the Spirit by the mind of Christ. Huh. But he's also dwelling in us in inexhaustible expressions of his divine glories to the all that Jesus could describe it as as rivers of living water. There is no way to describe the unlimited realm of divine power given to anyone who believes. And you will not separate that from I give it to anyone who believes. Anyone who would receive. Believing and receiving are two different things. I said believing and receiving are two different things. We've watched a lot of people believe, but very few people have learned to receive, to have a... Listen, I'm going to tell you something. A relationship demands reciprocation, and most folks got a monologue going on. I'm saying a divine relationship de de demand, a relationship of any kind demands reciprocation, and a divine relationship has it. You speak, God answers. You ask, God moves. I'm heading that way to prove that to you. That this is the whole purpose by which you were called. I'm telling you what I just said. I'm going to prove to you before you leave here this morning that it is exactly what God has purposed for your life. That he's called you and chosen you to do nothing more than to come into a relationship, a true, identifiable relationship defined by reciprocation where that you ask God responds. You are ordained, called, and elected to do this. That this must define your life as a believer. You say, well, I've known God for all these times and I haven't had this and I've had that. And Listen to me. Perhaps you must consider this one thing. That you did not devote yourself absolutely to being taught to live this kind of life. Because I tell you, you must absolutely consecrate your life to being taught to live this kind of life. There cannot be a staggering between two opinions, a halting between two ideas and concepts and philosophies. You can't be double-minded. You'll be unstable. You'll be off balance. You will have no firm footing to take the onslaught, the heat, the force that would rise against you. For all hell is a force that would rise against the man or the woman who would stand in the place that I'm calling you right by the Spirit to come and stand in right now. And that's why Paul said, be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of His might. He gave to us the highest degree of strength that is known in all the universe. The very strength and power of God Almighty who is the only omnipotent one. Hallelujah. <laughs> Listen to me now. Listen to me now. Don't be unbelieving. Don't be doubtful. Don't be of a double mind. Get in hold. Get a hold of God in this. Lay hold of this in your heart. Be persuaded of it because ultimately the circumstances, the wind and the waves and the opposition of life is going to come out against you and command that you recant. That you recant. That you submit to another form and doctrine. It's going to demand that you trust in the arm of flesh. It's going to demand that you live in doubt and unbelief. It's going to make you confess that you can't walk on the water and command the wind and the wave and tell the moon and the sun what to do. It's going to demand that you, you never be able to say, at my word alone. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm here as an ambassador of Christ standing in his stead, making manifest that which he has willed to be done in earth as it is in heaven. He thus incorporated his church as his covenant partner to fulfill all that he has purposed. That's what he said and that's what he did and that's what's right now available for you. The toys of the flesh, the pleasures of this world, the lust of Satan's lying, iniquitous work lures men away. To think that there's something more worth living, a way of life, more beautiful and valuable. It's all a lie and it's all an illusion. At the very act, the death springs up. 
<laughs> no man, no man can make decisions to, to, to give themselves over to sin and iniquity and not eat the fruits of his sorrow and death and destruction. No man, no man will ever violate that law. You will violate the law of gravity and all other natural laws before that spiritual law is ever once circumvented or denied. There's only one power released from that prison. There's only one power to reverse that unholy thing, that curse that's taken a hold of men because of their evil, of their doings. And that is that wonderful mercy and grace provided for us in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm set. I am set. I am set on San Diego. I am set on the United States of America more passionate today than I was 30 years ago, 32 years ago. I came here 33 years ago. More set. More set. Somebody said, but there's no great mountain before you. I scream, grace, 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 to the mountain until it become a plain. Somebody said, grace, it didn't move, it didn't move. I'll try one more time. Great. Did it move? Must be God's will that it stay there, that opposition stand before me and keep me and prevent me from being everywhere, everything that God has, anything, brother, that God has willed for me. No, not when you've had an encounter. When you have an encounter, one encounter is enough to live an entire lifetime on just one encounter. One encounter, I've discovered, takes you to another encounter, to another encounter, huh? And through those encounters, you've got great opposition, great forces of hell, all the powers of darkness, everything that belongs to the world and kingdom of Satan comes out against you to prevent you, trying to stop you from being faithful to God and moving forward in that which he commanded. But if you don't, turn to the right or to the left. Hallelujah. Makasipia tolopolia. Hallelujah. You can be a champion for men. You can be God's champion for men. You tell me, you tell me that George Whitfield was not a champion for men. He was a champion of the kingdom of God for men. He broke this nation and the nations of the world, the, the modern world of that time, into a great awakening in the kingdom of God through the message of the new birth. People would shake under the power of God as he declared to them a forgotten message in the gospel that uh, you must be born of the Holy Ghost. He must be born of the Spirit. It was almost unheard of until God raised up a voice to begin to shout it out so that he stood in the great plazas of the United States of America and Pennsylvania and New York declaring this wonderful God. So you tell me God did it raise up a champion in the great second, the second great awakening when he raised up Charles Finney. A champion for men. A champion. God's champion for men. Think about it. Will you think about it with me? I see the first great awakening as being that time where God created this form of government that we've come to enjoy that actually helped to prop up and, and fuel us and, and, you, and, and means by which we had latitude to move in missions to all evangelize all the world. True. I look, at, I look at the second great awakening during the time of Charles Finney. I look at it as the time where that great constitutional republic that was established suddenly be, be, became refined under Andrew Jackson who did things to make it more perfectly refined so it would function that much better he, 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 he trimmed the iniquity off of it got rid of the National Bank and a number of other things that he did which I'm not going to talk about it's a history lesson just how about the third great awakening how about my time how about your time where all of a sudden this whole thing is restored so that we'll have the latitude and the liberty to run to the nations. I'm telling you right now, one of the great men of God, Carlos Anacondia, spoke to me one day and he said, I'm telling you, America stands as the salt of the earth right now. Because of America, America holds back what Satan would run, would, would, would take authority and run rampant with throughout the whole of the earth. It stands as a hinderer of iniquity this day because of the church in America. Because it, America has laid hold on the divine principles of the word of God and has stood fast within those divine principles. But we've watched them eroded more over the past 10 years than they have over 238 years. Think about it. Think about it. It's your watch and my watch. Hey, people, I, I don't want to be known as the pathetic generation in the kingdom of God. 
Did you hear me? I don't want to be known as the pathetic, weak, unbelieving, full of doubt generation in the kingdom of God. That all hell broke loose when we were alive. <laughs> Come on now. Come on, somebody get stirred up. Somebody get stirred up with this righteous cause. Somebody, somebody come valiant. Somebody become valiant for God. Somebody get radical. Start beating the earth with the word of the Lord. Huh? Think about it now. God brought down his imperial majesty. Who is neither? To open up the doors for the kingdom of God to invade the people of Japan. In many respects, it looked like the church dropped the ball, but the church, God's got his time. God's going to raise up a show. God's going to raise up men who will boldly go and start proclaiming the word of God and won't look upon the outward appearance of things. Won't measure it by the number of response, but recognize there's more going on in heaven when somebody begins to move in faith. Huh? than any, anything that can be quantitated by man. I tell you right now, it's more than that. It, it, you, you, to quantitate it, you would have to be able to number the stars that are in the sky and the sand, sand upon the seashore to quantitate what God will do to one man who believes him. Woo! One man. One sim woman. Boy, girl. Huh. You have to resolve yourself to these things. This must become your living reality. This must become your truth. Truth is the word of God. Faith is the living reality, the truth, the hypostasis, the firm place for which you can stand, a footing that will give you all that you need to be able to resist all that would come against you and pose you. A footing. What a footing, what a stand, what a place we have to stand, the highest of all ground, the foundation of righteousness, Jesus Christ. This place that we now stand in the strength and the power of his might, where we find ourselves empowered in, in, in to, to do so. Because we have consecrated ourselves to the holiness of the word, to the holiness of living by the word. Your declaration of liberty, your declaration of freedom, your de declaration of being born again is but a flash in the pan if you do not live by the word, which ensures its liberties. Which ensures its liberties. Which ensures its liberties. You think you're warm? Think about me. You think you're a little hot? Just walk around screaming your head off. <laughs> With your coat on. <laughs> Hallelujah. People, I'm here to declare, I'm not here to give you a sermon. For me, God has valued this ministry and the people that sit in this ministry above the nations of the earth that he sent me to because I go out in the nations of the earth and we have crowds of 10,000, 20,000, 30,000. We see tens of thousands, multitudes and multitudes of people come into the kingdom. And every time I'm out there, the Lord says, go back. Go back now. Do that what I told you to do in San Diego. Go back. Declare those things which I put. I put my word in your mouth. Think about it. Think about it. You can say that as well. It's not just Jeremiah. It's just not one or two. God, everyone who is willing, he has put his word in our mouth. He's put his word in our heart and in, in, in our mouth. He's put his word in us. We've been born of an incorruptible seed by the word of God, the living word of God. Think about that. Jeremiah could have, didn't go that far. He didn't, get, didn't go as far as Peter went with it. But we can. And be found, be found speaking the truth and standing in good doctrine. Good doctrine is meaningless unless it's lived. Good, good doctrine is worthless unless it brings the outworking of faith for which it was purposed to produce. Joel, I'm so blessed Joel Stock still came up to me. I hope Joel's watching right now. He said, look, you know, we're connecting. I've been we've been using your book. Uh, sequential Gospels in our ministry and they got one of the biggest ministries in the United States since, I, since you first published it. He says our leadership uses it. And, you know, he, 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 just going through the whole list, it, it's a time that we connect at another level. Joel's going to come here. He's going to become more part of the church on a regular basis. God also did something else recently with me with another man of God who's just running with a fiery anointing. A I love the diversity of the body of Christ. Uh, uh, Brother Pat, and he's running with, we are, a, we, a, we are a remnant, a word that God put in his mouth, and Father has connected us with him in such a way. He's, he's like, he's like we, uh, we're connected. Our churches are connected. Our ministries are connected. Father's raising up a company of people. All you've got to do is want to fit in. 
All you got to do is want to be there. <laughs> you voluntarily exclude yourself. Don't do that. Don't, ex don't, don't exclude yourself. Oh, I don't fit in. Well, then you better get to fitting in real quick. You better change your opinion. You better get desperate about fitting in. You better want to fit in. Otherwise, you're going to be left out. And God's not willing that any be left out. God's not willing that any be left out, but everybody come to the knowledge of the truth. I want to show you something real quickly in verse 7. Because this is what James is talking about when he's talking about men and women running and moving in such authority. When he describes the prayer of Elijah, which then is fully defined for us in 1 Kings 17, 1, it ain't going to happen unless I say so. Uh, that's called boldness. That's called identity. That's called knowing who you are in God, knowing you're God's ambassador, having believed and received the ability to be, have the authority of a son of God. Come on, man. This is the most powerful preaching I've heard in a long time. I mean, my goodness gracious. This is the word of faith. This is the word of faith. This is a word from heaven. This is God's divine opportunity to you. You don't have to be left out. All you got to do is rise up and be willing to lay down your life. Rise up, lay down your rise up, lay down your life. Rise up, lay down your life. Come follow, move in Jesus. This is what has to happen. Because you look now with me in James. Back to James chapter 5 and look with me real quickly in verse 7. And you can see what Father says. He says to the church, he says to us today, in this same context of these mighty men, of the church of Jesus Christ, those who know their God, who do great exploits, those who've been taught of the Holy Ghost to deny themselves, lay down their life, surrender all to this consecrated living in God, living by his word and only by his word. He said, brethren, have patience for these kinds of folks to come to the earth have patience dearly beloved for these kind of folks to rise up because the husbandman look at here the husbandman are you there are you looking there the husbandman has long patience chapter 5 verse 7 be patient therefore unto the coming of the lord jesus behold the husbandman the father jesus is the vine read the branches this is a fruit that i'm talking about i'm going to show you the fruit here in just a minute are you ready are you listening? Do you still don't go to the bathroom yet? Just go, don't leave that. Don't leave at the last moment because at the last moment Pentecost fires come. A word of revelation comes. It sets you up for the divine encounter that you must have to do what God has commanded. Listen to me. I watch distractions run so many people. I watch so many start and they they start mighty and then they they soon are taken out. Not you, in Jesus' name. If you grab hold of the Word of God, you're going to be tried, you're going to be proven, you're going to go through the fire, and you're not going to whine about being in the fire. You're going to cry, turn it up! Heat it up! You're going to be faced with all of the, uh, all of the, uh, of the pressures of men that says you must bow. Are you going to burn? We're going to heat it up hotter for you? And you're going to say with such great Holy Ghost defiance, do whatever you want to do. I'm not doing what you say. I'm living by the word of God alone. And there, then the fourth man would be revealed in your midst as you stand in a miracle realm, a spectacular miracle realm of walking around in the fire and coming out without the smell of smoke, without any harm upon your body. Hallelujah. Man, I'm going to have a lunch date right away when we step over in heaven with those guys. I want to get the full story from them of all that God did at that moment. They were faced with the same fears. They were faced with the same threats. They were faced with the same everyday pressures that you and I are faced with. But they did not bend. And they did not bow. And God raised them up for greatness. God will raise you up. He's raised you up already. That's why you're here. God is determined and predetermined upon you the greatness of His only begotten Son and demands that you and I be conformed to His image. And He is the image of God, the Father. Uh -huh. That authority, that glory, that divine power, that divine ability. The fears have got to go. Uh -huh. The uncertainties have got to become your enemy. You take their head. Uh 
Huh? The compromise has got to be a place that a realm you do not even enter into anymore. The husbandmen have long patience for this fruit. How does the fruit come? Rain. Somebody's got to call and speak for it to rain. Somebody's got to be able to say, okay, the, those things that have deceived you and messed with you, taking them away from you right now. They mine. Huh? Huh? Paul said it in a different way. I'm going to give you over to the destruction of the flesh that the Spirit may be saved in the day of, of the Lord. Huh? Huh? Those things that have prevented you and kept you back, taking them away from you. I'm snatching them out of, your, out of your reach. You're not going to live under the blessing of God until you get humbled a little bit. Huh? But I want to talk about the good side of it. There's people already living there because there's been a famine for the word and most people are starting to realize it. There's already been a famine. There's already been a lack of spiritual rain. Most people are starting to realize it. Many people are starting to realize it. I was ministering to a guy who came out and delivered us some goods out of the Mission Training Center and I said, do you know Jesus? He said, yeah, I do. I said, where do you go to church? He said, I don't go to church anymore. I used to go to Calvary Chapel. It's just too boring. You know what the Lord was saying to me? Start a church in Klamath Falls. Start a church that's not boring. I didn't tell him. I said, God's going to give you a church. That's basically what I said. <laughs> ah! We go, we're getting ready to go start a church in Klamath Falls. Got a bunch of people that's already devoted to come and help me so we can start the thing. Three, four hundred people. I was going to, we're going to probably call the church Church of Klamath Falls. That early row, folks, wasn't it? Ha! What gives you the authority and the right? We've been here all these years. You need to come in here and call your church the Church of Klamath Falls. Watch what God will do. Amen. Somebody that's going to believe it. My word. <laughs> Somebody who's going to stand up. I'm so proud and blessed with Rodney Howard Brown right now as he stands up and throws a restraining order against the United States of America and a restraining order <laughs> against uh, the kingdom of hell and the powers of darkness saying you're not going to have your way no more. You stop it right now. Somebody's got somebody, somebody, no matter what the, and, and I'm going to tell you right now, you're not going to see a man of God who hasn't been willing to pay the price and had gone through a bunch of persecution and could have had many reasons and rights to have given up a long time ago and see somebody step out of that realm into a greater realm of authority. People, when people say, say, start saying, ah, oh, their time is over and they don't, they're not willing, willing to bend their bow. Mm -mm -mm. They just getting ready to step into a whole nother greater demonstration of the power of God who Father himself wants to make himself known mightily upon the behalf of anybody Anybody who's willing to believe what he says Amen. and what he's willed. Anyone who's willing to command what he's willed. That's what God says. Make it practical for your life. Don't make a scripture verse that you can memorize and apply to somebody else's life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come under the authority. Come under the submission of the Holy Ghost to do of his church. Because there's uh, no separation between Jesus Christ and his church. I don't care what all people have done through their wrongdoings and their mishandling and, you know, and all their inappropriate actions. That changed nothing. That changed nothing. People want to invalidate things that God has established because of the wrongdoing of a man. Forget about it. Nothing's changing. God's word stands forever. You can quote that all you want, but if you don't practice it and believe it, it has no value to you, for it, did, it was not mixed with faith. Do you understand me? The gospel was preached to Israel as well, but it did not profit them not being mixed with faith and those who heard his word. I'll tell you what you're going to do. Mighty deeds. Great exploits. That's what you're going to do. Huh? And that's why Satan fights against you so hard, and that's why he puts all those crazy ideas in your head and tries to make you feel like you're going to you know, have to give up and be defeated. Look, Joel Stockstill stands with no kidneys. He has no kidneys. He no, has no kidneys. And he will not stop. He's got such a bad condi condition. There's only one hospital in the United States of America that can even take care of him. Because he's got a, this crazy syndrome in his blood. He will not stop speaking faith, declaring the power of God, mighty signs and wonders and miracles of God, running wide open. While other people sitting on the couch are just feeling sorry for themselves because they can't seem to get moving. Give me a break. You, what, you and I are going to be ashamed before his presence if we have to stand alongside people who, who fought far greater battles than we did 
and yet accomplish more. No, 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 no. no. Uh, don't let it be said of you. Don't let it be. Don't. You need to get out of your mind of creating all the reasons why you can't do it and start getting empowered and just go do what God said like a little child in Jesus' name. Let me say it again. Huh? Somebody said, oh, you need to count the cost. I counted the cost when I called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and gave my life over to him and swore myself to live by his word to do what he commands. That's when I counted the cost. Are you listening to me? Are you listening here? Come on, man. Nobody ever did anything in the kingdom of God waiting till they had enough money in the bank account to do it. <laughs> Except for maybe Joseph Smith. And you know how that turned out. <laughs> or Muhammad. And you know how that turned out. We can name a few others. I'm about done. That's why we just... Worship just a short time this morning because I knew it was going to, I had a long word. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to explore the depths, the heights, the breadth, the length. Amen. Amen. So I said, why does the meeting have to go so long? Well, because we want to know the, the height, the breadth, the length, the depth. Amen. Hallelujah. The husbandman has long patience until the scripture says here, he waits for the precious fruit of the earth until it received the early and the latter rain. Huh? I'm crying for rain in the time of rain. I'm commanding rain to fall in the time of rain. I'm not calling for the rain to fall on you. I'm calling for the rain to fall on me. I'm calling for the rain to fall on all of us. Me first. Me first. I'm sorry. I look taking a priority in the line. But until you first receive, you've got nothing to give. Until you first have it, you have no authority to bring it to pass in other people's lives. I figure if you can have a move of God in Southern California, the great shaking of the power of God in Southern California, it's all downhill from here for the rest of the world. Amen. That's what I figure. I figure, I figure if you can do it here in Southern California, the strong man has been bound for sure and his house is spoiled without any effort. Amen. 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 Join with me in my righteous cause. Join, be stirred up by the Spirit of the living God to be valiant in God. To have faces like lions. <laughs> to run like a horse. <laughs> Hallelujah. Many of you have never ridden a horse. I tell you, you don't know what you're missing. Huh? When you become a, when a horse becomes a good friend. I used to have a good friend. A horse who was a good friend. And that horse could run. That horse, when he stretched out his legs, running up hill, he stretched out his legs. I think they went vertical. When he ran, it was almost like flying. Huh? God's given us the ability to run with such swiftness in the things that we are to accomplish. Alexander the Great, possessed by a demon spirit far inferior to God, ran so swiftly that he conquered the known world in seven years. He conquered the known world in seven years. What can a man of God, huh? what can a church of the Lord Jesus Christ, what can a people in a company of God that embraces the diversity of the Holy Ghost and submits themselves to the sovereign will of God, Here's what's been coming out of my heart. Oh, sovereign Lord. Oh, God Almighty. Revive your work again in the midst of us as in the days of old. Oh, God, rise up again and be valiant for your word. Oh, God, for they made void thy law, oh Lord. It is time for you to work. And I'm going to give him no rest day or night. I don't know what you're doing with your time. But I'm not going to give him any rest day or night. I'm going to learn from the widow why men ought to always pray and not to faint. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, learning to talk with God, learning to speak with Him, learning to make petition, and learning to make requests will ultimately bring you into a realm of faith where you can speak on His behalf and command that which He's willed. If you don't give yourself to dialoguing, relationship, because I'm going to tell you it's relationship. It's that love relationship that grows where faith begins to work in untold measure. It's that relationship, that love relationship that produces a faith with such authority. Peter's encounter with God. Peter's encounters with God left him to a point beyond Pentecost 
to her that the glory of God so overshadowed him that the Holy Ghost, knowing all of us know that the Holy Spirit is both in us and with us, but the Holy Spirit so overshadowed him of, and a witness of his having such companionship with the Holy Ghost was that he was lit up like Moses. He cast a shadow wherever he went. The shadow, the shadow, the word shadow that is used there, at his shadow they were healed. Huh, they brought him into the street because at his very shadow they were healed. It literally is the word overshadowed. And every time where that word is used, the power of God shall come upon you and overshadow you and that holy thing that should be conceived and you should be called the Son of God. Everywhere that overshadowed is used. It's an encounter of glory where the resident presence of the living God is so manifest in your life. Huh? The radiance of God's divine glory. Come on, people. Come on now. I mean, listen, we can just pull these things out for you all day long in the Word of God, but you're going to have to grab a hold of them and you're going to have to believe them and you're going to have to do them and it's going to cost you everything and it's going to be a price to pay because the first thing that's got to go is your pride and your self-will and your opinion and your insights and your perceptions and all your ideas and all your great plans. And don't feel alone. Mine too. And anyone else who wants to walk along this way will hear We'll hear what Jesus said. I don't do my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. You're going to learn that too. Hallelujah. I don't think my own thoughts. I don't think my own plans. Papa makes them for me. I don't do anything unless I see him do it. I don't say anything unless I hear him say it. Have you heard God say anything? If you have, then do it. We got a whole book. Now I want you to look at the fruit. I want you to look at the fruit the Father's waiting for. You see the fruit? Husbandmen waiting for a fruit. And a fruit that's got to come because of a rain. And a rain always speaks of a divine encounter. It always speaks of the manifest presence of God coming and shaking the earth. Touching his people. I want you to look with me in John, quickly. John chapter 15, verse 16. John chapter 15, verse 16. You've not chosen me. Take the load off, folks. Take the load off. It's not your plan. Take the load off now. Take the load off. Huh? You're, you're free now. You don't have to be burdened anymore. Huh? It's not your idea. You don't got to talk God into this. You don't, hey, listen. You're not your, it's not your idea. God says it's not your idea. It's my idea. It's my idea. It's not your plan. It's my plan. You didn't choose me. I chose you. Come on, man. Is that, is that liberating or what? Is that empowering or what? And I ordained you that you should go forth and bring forth fruit. Whoo! And that your fruit should remain. This is the fruit that the husbandman hath long patience for. A fruit that can only be produced by the rain. A, fr a fruit that is produced by a rain that a person who in relationship with God finds a place of divine power and authority and in God's stead commands the earth to obey His will. What greater thing can you live to be? If you, if you were living to be the king of the world, the king of the universe, you couldn't be something greater than what God's ordained. So what Father's ordained for you and me. And here's the fruit. The fruit is right back to where we're at. That whatever you ask the Father, He will do it. That the relationship, the relationship, the relationship, the reciprocation of the relationship, the relationship is proven by reciprocation. All the Baalites said, we know God. We know the true God. Elijah, you don't have them. You won. Look at how many of us there are. We the popular church of the day. I said, okay. Let's let God be God who reciprocates. Whoever God is, who, who's ever God will answer them when they ask of Him. Let Him be God. Let God be proven by relationship, in other words. You call out to your God, and you see if He reciprocates. You see if He answers. This is the proof of the church. This is the proof of a living relationship. This is the proof of a light that shines into the world. This is the evidence that Jesus rose up from the dead, the witness of the authority that has been given to us to execute in the earth today. You call on your God, let's see what he does. And we're going to set it to a level that we can know that no trickery of men can produce it. 
for fire must come down out of heaven and consume the offering upon the altar. And we're going to make sure there can be no tricks. We're going to soak it down with whatever water's left. We're going to put all our, our beliefs to a test. They already hadn't rained for three and a half years. You with me? Already hasn't rained for three and a half years. Huh? And what little bit of drinking water you guys got left, we're going to throw it on the fire. So at the end, you're not going to have nothing to sip on. You're going to throw everything in on this. And we watch the reciprocation take place. Where Elijah said, he made just one simple request. He called for the fire. He said, fire come and fire came. Licked up the water. He, filled the, he dug the ditches and filled them, with, filled them with water around the sacrifice. Then he took in himself, he slew all the false prophets. Uh, he quite a radical preacher. Uh, and the love of God was manifested as heads were flying around. Hallelujah. I want you to stand with me. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to give you no choice. I tell you right now, you are already consecrated. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command you in Jesus' name to be sold out to this will of the Father. I command you in Jesus' name to be consecrated to living this divine will and plan that God made manifest in Jesus Christ. I command you in Jesus Christ's name to be set apart, sanctified to living by the word of God, the life of Jesus Christ. Forget about other, all your other ideas. They're meaningless. For all the word of God is contained in this one word alone, Jesus. For all the will of the Father is contained in this one life alone, Jesus. For every, every doctrine, every idea, every concept is all revealed in one proclamation, the Word, Christ Jesus. Forget about all the rest. It's not that difficult and it's not that complicated. Father made it simple. If you want to wrestle the Scripture with all your own personal wisdom, it will be to your own destruction. <laughs> Father has revealed it to babes, to simple. Today, in Jesus' name, I come to you and I set you free from every care of this life, from every lie and from every form of deceit, from every hurt, from every false witness, from every false pre preacher. You know, people come around, they tell you stories about other people and tell you stories about things. You know what they are? They false witnesses. They false preachers. They're preaching something. They're just not preaching the gospel of the kingdom. They're preaching the lies of, of hell, the, the stories of demonic forces to try to keep men from moving forward in this wonderful realm of, of divine relationship with God and with one another. I set you free from those things right now. Fire of God falls upon you to burn up the chaff right now in Jesus' name. Fire of God falls upon you right now to create anew, to revive again His work in you. So that you burn with the fiery, beautiful glory of faith. Someone said the other day, your faith is very attractive. I guarantee you, dear people, there's nothing you could beautify yourself more with. It outdo your makeup plan. It outdo your anti-aging plan. It outdo your health plan, your physical whatever plan. Tell you, just get yourself, get beautified with His salvation. Get beautified with faith. Get beautified with His love. Get beautified with authority. Get beautified with confidence. Get beautified with boldness in God. Get beautified with, with knowing how much He loves you and how dedicated He is to you. Somebody said, where do I start? At the beginning. In the beginning was the Word. You start with the Word. You start with the Word, Christ Jesus. And you, start, you start anew. You start afresh. You say, I'm going to take each, my, each step I'm going to take. I'm not going to take a step in an unknown realm. I'm not going to take a step in darkness. I'm going to take a step in the light. I'm going to step right that first step of faith with Jesus Christ. I'm going to be born again. I'm going to be born of the Spirit. I'm going to be born of Him. 
I'm going to learn how to walk in love and humility. I'm going to learn how to walk in relationship and conversation. I'm going to learn how to walk as a subject of the king. Hallelujah. It's just that simple. Every day it will be challenged. Every day the forces of hell, the cares of this life, all the things that men do in the pleasures of their lust will come out against you to stop you from being who you are in God. But don't let it. If you fail, resolve yourself to success and rise up. Because someone's dedicated, so consecrated to you that you cannot fail. That you'll learn in every way to be a conqueror, yea, more than an over, more than a conqueror, an overcomer in all things, even as he overcame. Where you defeat Satan at every point. I want you to, right now, take a hold of the Word of God, Spirit of God, the faith in Christ Jesus. Right where you're standing, I want, to con I want you to consecrate yourself to the Lord. There are people in here right now, you've never surrendered your life to Jesus. It's time for you to surrender your life to Jesus. You can look back on this, this day, what, it's July the 6th, 2014, and it can become your birthday. Everything changes, everything becomes new. Just because you did one simple little thing. This is about as complicated as it's going to get in God. It's about as complicated as it's going to get in God. You call upon the name of the Lord and you'll be saved. It's about, a compl it's about a com as complicated as it's going to get. You believe that which God has spoken and you'll receive that miracle which He wants to perform. Just call upon Him. Christ Jesus is here to change you. He's here to make you new. Some of you are here, you've called upon the Lord many times, but it's just you've never found stability in your life. You've never found that, that overcoming life. You've never understood how to walk it out to say no to all that Satan's doing. Today, in the mighty name of Jesus, receive that a divine indwelling, that divine empowering, that wonderful encounter with God that makes everything different for you. I just want everybody in this place, I want you to raise your hands towards heaven. I want you to know that it's impossible to please God. Wouldn't that be terrible if we left it there? Let me say it again. I want you to know it's impossible to please God. That'd be just terrible if we left it there, wouldn't it? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For they that come to God must believe that He is, that He exists, that He's here right now. He's here right now. The strongholds of Satan, the mind-blinding spirits that would try to eclipse this wonderful reality that Jesus Christ is here right now, I bind them, I break the power of them and the authority of them in Jesus' name. So that you may understand and know and come to know that He's here right now. And that He is ready to reward you. He's ready to reward you in the context of this relationship. He's ready to reciprocate. He's a rewarder of those who seek him, who diligently seek him, who are, je who are zealous for him, who are jealous for him, who are needy of him, who are hungry for the things of righteousness and of the kingdom. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus now. Every interference. Everything that would try to stand in your way. Everything that would try to block your access. Right now in Jesus name. Now in Jesus name. It leads out the way. People of, of God. People of the abiding place ministry. People of the church. Saints of the living God that are here and that are watching by web or YouTube. You've got to understand, you in the midst of a battle. And somebody but just besides one or two or three are going to have to come to realize the kind of warfare, the kind of battle that we are in. And begin to resolve themselves to the only kind of power and authority that can win the day. The power and the authority that can command with the word, moon and sun stand still at my word. 
it shall not rain. And at my word, it shall rain again. Somebody's going to have to come into a relationship where they take upon them their own self the responsibility of doing that which Jesus Christ commissioned us to do. Somebody is going to have to take upon themselves the responsibility of a lost and dying world that is dying around them right now because there's not a witness of the power of God that changes the hearts of men. Today, the heavenly vision knocks at your door. Today, right now, Paul said, I was not unfaithful to the heavenly vision. The heavenly vision that God gave him was God said, I give you the power to turn people from Satan to God. One man. I give you the power. No, anyone who will believe. It's the heavenly vision. I give you the power to turn men from light to darkness. Folks running around asking people if they want to try Jesus. No, God's got a heavenly vision to give you. And with that is an authority to change the state of affairs. Change the condition of men. If our gospel be hid, you listen to me. If our gospel be hid, it is our fault. For if our gospel be hid, it is hid from those whom the God of this world has blinded their minds so that they could not see. And I say it's our fault for God has given us the authority to turn them from the power of Satan. To bring them out of darkness into this marvelous light. When the church of the Lord Jesus Christ takes up their responsibility and recognizes the mandate that God has given, and there is a response of faithfulness and a response of truth, then there will be such a cry coming up from our hearts and from the prayer chambers of Allah that will bring a great and a mighty spiritual reign, a mighty revival of His presence. All this week, all this next week, we'll be meeting for prayer. Meeting at 7 o'clock. If there's not already a meeting going on, meeting at 7 o'clock for prayer. Come lift up our voice and cry out to God for the rain. To cry out to God to see those things that will only turn back the tide of Satan's will. The tsunami of Satan's will can only be stopped by the force of heaven expressed through those who know their God. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name, I commission you now to live by the Word of God. I commission you now to execute the sovereign will of the living God. I commission you now by the ordination of heaven to bring forth the fruit which God demands. That whatever you ask the Father, He will do it. And you will learn that. You will learn that. You will be taught that step by step through the mentorship of the Holy Ghost, God Himself, who's here that you no longer, you can no longer ignore. You're going to have to learn how to receive from Him. You're going to have to learn to hear Him. You're going to have to learn to respond to Him against all those assailing forces. Hallelujah. I want everybody to come forward. I'm going to lay hands on you. I could have said, I could have said, Everyone who wants to move in a new dimension of faith and authority to represent heaven come forward. But I wasn't going to leave it to the exercise of what you understand right now. But in the authority of heaven commands you to do what that, that which God has purposed for you to do. And I can come by and we can lay hands on you. For the purpose of you being built up in the faith. For the purpose of you being so resolved and so convinced. I'm not, I'm not laying my hands on you for the ex, any, any form of expression. It doesn't matter what happens. Whether you stand still, whether you fall down, whether you go up. It doesn't matter. 
jump around or lay down. It doesn't matter. I'm laying my hands on you that you might be consecrated to that will of the Father that I expressed by the Holy Ghost here today. And I get my authority on the high ground of the Word of God for everything that God ever commanded and ever gave and supplied. It was transferred by the anointing and usually by the ministry of the laying on of hands. And I'm telling you right now for everybody that stands in this place that is fully submitted and connected and has an understanding of honor for those things which God has done, these things will flow to you. And those of you who do not understand that yet, one day you will understand it. And that day that you understand it will be the day that the supply of a spirit will flow to you freely. And God is devoted to both. <laughs> Giving to those who can't receive and preparing for those who can't to be able to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ristaya. Ristai. Just do it. God said to do it, so just do it. I said God said to do it, so just do it. I said God said to do it, so just do it. I haven't left yet. I said God said to do it, so just do it. Same goes for you. God said to do it, so just do it. Now in Jesus' name. Consecrated now. Consecrated. Start moving in faith like never before. Hey, hey, forget about you. You know what Paul said? Look at me. Paul said, we don't preach ourselves. A lot of people go preaching themselves based upon what they did and how they feel about themselves. We don't preach ourselves. We preach Jesus. You didn't get, hey, look at me. You didn't get here by your own ideas. I tell you right now, you kept by the power of God. Huh? I'll tell you right now, grace is working a mighty work for the hatred of sin and the loving of righteousness in your life. So I would go ahead and rejoice if I were you. There are some people who get overcome about feeling bad for doing wrong. My God, you never felt bad about doing wrong until God took a hold of your heart and changed your nature. Just now you just need to resolve yourself to recognize you don't need to torment yourself no more by doing bad. <laughs> Amen. Amen. When you fail, rise up with resolve to succeed. Amen. And you'll never be defeated. <laughs> Just make it up in your heart right now. Make it up in your mind and heart right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the name I stay. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Out of a stay. In Jesus' name. In Jesus, in Jesus, in the name of Jesus, now, Holy Ghost woman, fire on, in Jesus' name, consecrated with such boldness, with such authority, Heather, Saramangay Asaya, Masakayan in English, Mama Sekara Mosiah, Basiloya, Basiloya, Basilobaya, Basileo, Basileo, Yarasaya, Basileo. Basileia, living for the kingdom. Basileia, living. Basileia, 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 living. Basilo, Basileia. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Bong's name. Well, that authority which you long for, now begin to function in it. Lift your hands, Scott. Masate. Titolo masate. Nietea nanasatae. Mifratusia tatana mosatea. Ha ha. Ha ha. Unable. <laughs> Unable to do what you would. Masatai, right in the back of the Melasika Leia, right now. Veya Toya, right now for the crown of your head. The soles of your feet. Mizizu. Mandadeo. Mandadeo. Mandadeo, see. Now, no more your life. No more. No more. Over. No more your life. Sutoya Mais. Fire God. Melasipai. Vela Sutapada. In Jesus' name. Divine authority, divine authority. Father, we thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You asked Jesus to come in your life. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? No. Father, thank you for the anointing right now upon this life. In Jesus' name, receive the Holy Ghost. I give you a new heart and a new spirit, says the Lord. 
and I put my spirit on the inside of you so you no longer live your life as you have up to this point or according to the will of men but now born of the spirit to live according to the will of God hey Scott guess what I got you I got you what's going on in your life right now physically it's the will of Papa I got you right here Boldness in the faith. I said, boldness in the faith. Boldness. I said, boldness in the faith. Listen, God going to bring such a shout out of your belly. My Satan and Bela keep up. That I say. My man to say it. Fire God. Man Bea. Consecrated to the life and will of the Father. Don't care about what anybody else says. Mazutane, Mazutana Monde. Masatala Boste. Mingesi Patibre. Now in Jesus' name. Mambasileo, Mambasileo. All about the kingdom. Hallelujah. Mambasileo Barate, Arasatara. Arasatea no Mangasai. Mangalea Arasatara. Manamonde. Ah, many have been trained in the mind of human intellect. But the Holy Ghost is training uh, in the mind of the Spirit, in the mind of Christ, uh, to execute the will of the Father. Hallelujah. Now in Jesus' name, the fire of the Holy Ghost. Out of your belly flows these rivers. Mazuzadeya, mazuzabarisa, yene makate. Makatea. Pitonomo. Zirupa. Yeah. Radical, fiery, Holy Ghost anointing. In Jesus' name. From this day forward, from this day forward, consecrated only to do that which God commands. No matter what it costs you. No matter what it costs you. In the name of Jesus, Japan, yield. Yield. Japan, yield. I command you, yield. You to the kingdom of God. Is it Zara? Is it Ebana? Ile kolo, ikele yolo lo kubiala, ikele yolo lo. In the name of Jesus, divine power and authority upon whosoever wills. Divine power and authority upon whosoever wills. La rada ikste, vito la Mosaya, vito la Mosaya, beki rasia ta. Now in Jesus' name, receive the Holy Ghost. Receive, receive the Holy Ghost. Receive, receive the Holy Ghost. Receive, right now, receive the Holy Ghost. Right now, receive. Man, bam, bam, day. Man, day, bam, day. Nam, bam, day. Receive the Holy Ghost. I break off the strongholds of religion. <laughs> receive the Holy Ghost. Ramasakaya. Man, authority. Berevete, alamasata, yineke. Out of your belly flows. These rivers of the Holy Ghost. God's commanded it, so go do it. God's commanded it, so go do it. Mandalam, there's not a better life for you to live, not a greater opportunity given. Now do it. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. Only believe all things are possible. What God would have you do is no more, is less difficult than what you did for me out at the MTC. I supplied the resources and you did the work. Father's going to do it even better. He supplied the resources that give you the energy and power to do the work. And the boldness and the braveness. So you do it without fear. Great confidence in Jesus' name. Jonathan, now in Jesus' name. You know, Mordecai's witness to Esther is one that applies to everyone. He said, for surely God has raised you up for such a time as this. But if you're willing if you're unwilling he will raise up deliverance from some place else if you're unwilling if you're not going to go out the way if you're not willing to lay down your life yes you were born for such a time as this but if you're not willing he will raise up deliverance from some place else now in jesus name 
Piaran Musaya. Monk Zedea Taya. Lira Bosia to Yarasaya. Ah, Satar. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Hallelujah. You know, people, we used to sing the song, He's able, He's able, I know my God is able. Yeah, He is able, but are you willing to let Him do what He's able to do through you? Because that's how He's going to do it. Through you. I said through you. In the mighty name of Jesus. I, through your life. You guys have had the call of God upon you for a long time. You've been listening to the voice of the Spirit for a long time. In Jesus' name. Now, a new dimension of revelation and authority. Go do what God's commanded. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Azodeya. Hallelujah. Erasaramange ilipataya anamusakande. Yeah, yeah. And it's just going to begin right down on your knees. Right down on your knees. Crying out to God. Taking a whole new dimension of prayer and supplication with all thanksgiving in the Spirit. That's where it's going to begin. Father, we thank you for the anointing. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in Jesus' name. Right, right now in Jesus' Adam. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. God has got great things for you to do. Great plans, but you've got to be crushed. Are you willing? Sure, yes. Are you willing to be broken of all your own ideas, concepts, plans? Have you, are you allow, will you allow God to ruin them? We allow God to refine your thinking. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because yeah. yeah. listen, listen, what he wants to do through you. You don't want to be held responsible on that day for not allowing because the impact will be great. Okay. But you've got to become so small in your own eyes. It's got to become all about Jesus now. Okay. And no, no defeat from this day forward. Adam of God, listen to me. It's not about you, but by the power of the living God that lives on the inside of you, you can do all things. This day. This day. This day. This day. I'm not really even allowed to tell you many things to do. I'm not. I'm not. I want to, but I'm not allowed. It's like God makes us discover because we're hungry. Sometimes I overstep my boundaries because I am so desperate to see People, listen. Did I start telling them the things that they're supposed to discover? <laughs> it's been my biggest fault. Being too passionate about the destiny and the plan of God for people's lives. Come on, man. Discover these things in God. Come on now. <laughs> in Jesus' name, Adam of the Spirit. <laughs> Rise up, take your place among those who stand around the throne. <laughs> you and Robin, baby, too. <laughs> now in Jesus' name, this authority of heaven I freely give to you. As I freely received, I freely give to you now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Fiery. 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 Masitea. Fiery. Faith will die. Full of faith. Faith, Messiah. Fire, but also. In Jesus' mighty name. The rope of the in the city. Rap. Fire. Help. From this day forward, from this day forward, only to live for Jesus. From this day forward, nothing matters but His divine power and glory being revealed in your life. From this day forward, nothing else accounts. Nothing else counts. You may be given the degree of the smartest person on the earth and given the papers of ownership to all its property. And yet, for the chance to be like this, it does not matter. 
it becomes a latrine, a dunghill. And worse than that, the stuff that's in it. Ha, huh, a value to you. Fire God now. Fire God. Fire God on you now in Jesus' name. Fire God on you. Like, how are you doing? How are you?